you mentioned diabetes um, before mm-hmm. and, and um, the problem with you know, insufficient sulfate um, generating cholesterol sulfate uh, leading to elevated LDL. Um, could you maybe expand a little bit more about how you think glyphosate might be um, contributing to the diabetes epidemic? Yeah, diabetes is actually um, quite complex. And of course, it has to do with the, um, well, one thing is insulin actually has glycine residues in it. So insulin could be getting messed up by glyphosate. Um, The receptors, um, there's very big problems with mitochondria. uh, And I wrote a lot about that in my book. Glyphosate messes up many enzymes that are crucial for mitochondrial health. Um, it depletes glutathione. It messes up succinate dehydrogenase, which is a crucial enzyme in the mitochondrial citric acid cycle. So it disrupts the, um, the body's ability to, uh, to process glucose through the, um, through the mitochondria. I think the biggest problem could be PEPCK, uh, which I talked about a lot in my book, very interesting molecule of phosphoenolpyruvate carboxykinase which has a setup that exactly uh, matches what goes on in the enzyme that glyphosate famously disrupts in the plants, which is EPSP synthase. Just like EPSP synthase, it has highly conserved glycine at a place where uh, phosphate binds to the protein and the phosphate is, a, is in a molecule called PEP. So both of those enzymes have that same setup with um, with these highly conserved glycines. And it's been shown in the case of EPSP synthase that if that glycine gets replaced by another amino acid, such as alanine, which is the most similar one to glycine, it becomes completely insensitive to glyphosate. So that's one of the arguments I use to say that that is the way in which it is messing up that protein is by replacing that glycine. So if the same thing happens to PEPCK, then this has enormous consequences, but one of them is fatty liver disease which is also an epidemic. And fatty liver disease, um, well, what happens with PEPCK is essential for making glucose out of other things. So like from fats or from proteins, the the process that does that depends upon PEPCK. So when the liver uh, can't do that efficiently, um, if the glucose level in the blood gets too low, you can end up in a coma. So because your body wants to say, oh my God, the glucose is getting low. We need to make more, let's make it using this PEPCK enzyme. Let's make more glucose, get it into the blood so that we'll be safe. And what I think is happening over time is that the system sort of changes the set point because it realizes there's a threat of glucose dropping too quickly. Like if you were exercising and burning up a lot of sugar, and you can't depend upon this, this what's called gluconeogenesis system to make more glucose under an emergency condition, then your body kind of makes this decision to uh, keep the glucose levels high in the blood to protect you from the coma. Yeah. And that yeah. starts to be the precursor to diabetes. Right. Well, you, you've talked a, bit, a little bit about the liver there. Um, you also talk in the book about how glyphosate disrupts the CYP enzymes in the liver. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm most familiar with the CYP enzymes because of vitamin D, mm-hmm. uh, which I know you're into because you're in Hawaii. So um, <laughs> yes, <laughs> I love vitamin D. I love the yeah, sun. <laughs> yeah, you you and I both. Um, could you talk a little bit more about how um, the CYP enzymes um, might be uh, disrupted by glyphosate and what that means for uh, these? hormone like molecules like vitamin D or anything involved any of these hormones involving cholesterol. So, which is, you know, a lot of the important ones. I know. Yeah. The CYP enzymes are, are quite uh, amazing. There's many of them and different ones do different things and they're all important. And all of them, I think are suppressed by glyphosate. And the way that it suppresses all of them is because it suppresses an enzyme called CYP reductase. That's been shown experimentally. Cy- cytochrome P450 reductase is the enzyme that takes the cypes back to where they need to be in order to do their job. So there's like an oxidation reduction pathway where the cype enzyme gets oxidized when it does its thing. And then it depends on cype reductase to bring it back to the state that it can now do it again. So what happens is these cype enzymes all get oxidized. They can't get brought back to their active state. So they all get suppressed that way. I think it's a general property. Um, because of uh, glyphosate disrupting that one enzyme, which is cyp reductase. And that enzyme has this perfect glyphosate susceptibility motif that I talked about, um, which makes it make sense to me that it would be suppressing it. It's also been shown experimentally. And so um, 
the sipe enzymes, for example, are essential for activating vitamin D. The vitamin D that you measure when you see how much vitamin D you have is the one that's made after the sipe enzyme in the liver has added this hydroxyl group. And so there's actually a sipe enzyme in the liver that does one step and then a sipe enzyme in the kidneys that does another step to make the 1 comma 25 hydroxy vitamin D. And that's the active form. But what you measure is the one in between. It's just the, the, the 25 hydroxy vitamin D. So it's a little mm -hmm. bit complicated, but I actually think vitamin D's job is to test out all of these enzymes and make sure they're working correctly. I think it's a really cool system. I believe that these, these molecules that have this kind of hormone-like effect that they can, signaling molecules like vitamin D that can have so, many, so much impact on the behavior of the cells, they actually check out the systems to make sure they're working. And then if they are working, then they're good to go and they can tell the cells, yes, everything's great, be happy, you know? But when they can't make the vitamin D, that's a big red flag. Oh, if I can't make the, vitamin, the hydroxy vitamin D, then I've got problems with sipe enzymes. That's gonna have huge consequences. So we have to do something different here because if the sipes aren't working, we're in trouble. See what I'm saying? It's yeah, a signaling yeah. molecule um, that's letting the body know that those sipe enzymes are broken. And the sipes, you know, they're critical for the bile acids. And there's a huge problem with bile acids today. And many, many people are having troubles with insufficient bile acids, inability to digest fats. And, um, and th those depend upon the sipe enzymes. They also are critical for de de detoxing many different fat soluble toxic chemicals. So many other chemicals become much more toxic because glyphosate is disrupting the enzymes that detoxify them. And of course, cholesterol also depends, cholesterol metabolism depends critically upon sipe enzymes as well. So yeah. you get all kinds of pro problems with various lipids um, with, uh, with the sipe enzymes being broken. Right. Well, it's, it's funny you, you mentioned that because your conversation with, um, I think it was Tom Cowan uh, talking ah, about uh -huh. um, why you don't, well, you wouldn't, well, first of all, you wouldn't recommend vitamin D supplementation. Right. And, um, also why it's probably not a good idea to go high dose vitamin mm -hmm. D supplementation because what you're doing is absolutely smashing those sipe enzymes all at once with all of this vitamin D. Right. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that was, that was, it um, sort of distracts them from their main job. Right? Yeah. They're busy making, you know, Oh my God, all this vitamin D I have to do. And they have, they're trying to do all these other things at the same time. Vitamin D wants to be subtle, you know, just yep. go test and make sure it's okay. And now that's yeah. good, but yeah, I think so. I, I think, and I've actually always, I've been very strong on this position of not taking vitamin D supplements. I've never taken them myself. Yes. Um, I don't know that I'm right, but I have, I've, I wrote a long article for the Western Price Foundation uh, where I did research and, you know, used a lot of references that supported my position that, you know, you should be wary of that. Yeah, I actually, or that it's very different from sunlight. You know, people think um, I say I really love the sun. I, you really should get out in the sun, yeah. and the person will answer, "Oh yeah, I know vitamin D is important." I'm like, "No, no, not vitamin D, the sun." You know, yeah, <laughs> exactly, because they think they can just take a pill. Oh, well, it also links back to the the whole water topic as well with the sun. It um, certainly does. The, yeah, the structured I mean, water as it grows enormously in response to sunlight. Yeah.